Welcome to Gamer Ability. I'm your host Sixpenny and in today's video I'm providing you a shot shaping tutorial for PGA Tour 2K21. In this video I will show you how I use shot shaping to generate more spin but also I use shot shaping to hit percentage shots without doing a true percentage shot. If you have not yet subscribed to the channel, make sure you click the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date on all my new videos. Stay tuned and enjoy. So for the purposes of this shot shaping tutorial, I am on a practice course that I have and I'm, I have difficulty turned down. I have the power bar on and swing timing turned off just so I can show you how specifically shot shaping can't you can use shot shaping to really hit percentage shots easier than actually trying to hit less power by moving the stick back less. Now this method with shot shaping does not really work on a driver, three wood, five wood, and not really on a hybrid either. Um, so if we hit a five wood, let's say so if you hold down LB, that's how you get into your true shot shot shaping here. If I move the left stick down on the screen, it's going to change the loft. So D loft would be moving it up. And then loft, loft the ball higher would be moving it all the way down. And this is also where you can move into your draw and fade. I don't use those shot shaping features very often. Uh, I, most, I do sometimes, but penal, tempo, penalties, and forgiveness make me avoid it most often. Now the right stick will change the attacking angle of the shot. So this is how you can generate more spin or generate less spin. If, if I move it up, I generate less spin. And I hit the ball, kind of hit on, on top of the ball a little bit. If I hit all the way down to the minus sign, this is going to add more spin to the ball. So if I hit the 5 wood, and I even, I move, I loft the 5 wood all the way up and I add all the spin to it that I want. If I had a 100% shot here, so it still carried 230, 231. But it rolled out about 12 yards. If I was to hit the regular three wood there, it would have rolled about 15 to 20. So keep in mind, I'm hitting into greens here with about average average speed and average softness. So as you can see, shot shaping does not, you cannot use shot shaping to hit percentage shots with woods, irons, drivers. Though in that case, you actually have to hit true percentage shots. So with the power bar turned off, if I wanted to hit this 275, I would do a practice swing, fill for the controller vibration, and then do a practice swing until I, I get close to 93% that I would try to hit a 93% shot. I do not play with the power bar in my normal rounds. I usually play on the math. I play on the TGC Tours difficulty settings. There are in some cases in my career mode series where I play on those settings, but I actually play on pro swing difficulty. But for the most case, I play on master swing difficulty. But let's get into when I would use shot shape. So we get into the irons here. So I use a 5 iron, the next club above that is a 4 hybrid. So if I need to hit it 181, I would do a percentage shot. Because if I raise loft right stick on the hybrid, it really doesn't affect distance. Maybe 1 to 2 yards at most. But say we're at the 5 iron. And I need to carry it about 164, 165. I have a choice. I can do a percentage shot to try to hit 95%. Or I can use shot shaping. There is a penalty to using shot shaping. The penalty is the tempo forgiveness. So if I turn tempo on here, do you look at the forgiveness area? I mean, this of course it's on Pro Elm or beginner, but see how it gets smaller when I move each element. So if I change it up to master which is what I normally play on. If I move this, look at the forgiveness level, even with just a five iron. So if you find it hard to 
your temp you find your tempo already difficult right now you can't really hit that perfect tempo this not might not be the best method for you the best method for you might actually be to try to do a 95 percent shot but what i like to do is go into shot shaping if i move the left with any iron or wedge if i move both so if i move the left stick down to right before it changes see how it's dark here and it changes to light at the very bottom of the circle at the very edge of the dark if i hit there i'm actually going to hit in between the two clubs so i did a fast follow through there let me turn off the difficulties turn off swing timing so i can show you what i'm talking about Let's rewind the shot. If I hit the 5 iron and I move the loft down to just before it changes from dark to clear here, right before it. If I hit 100%, this should land about 165. It's 165, perfect. But see how it still rolled out. A pretty good roll. It would have probably rolled out about 10 yards. How can we adjust for that? So what I do in this case, I want to hit the green at 165 and roll out to land close to this pin, maybe a little bit after it. So in order to do that, I'm going to use shot shaping there to that same level, right? So it changes. So it's gray here, gray and black on the outside. We want to move it to just before it changes to white a white solid down here without the black background. So right there, and I'm going to move the right stick. This is how you get the spin. I'm going to move the right stick to match it. And then I'm going to hit the shot. We should still land about 165, and we did. But the difference is, is the spin. You're going to generate a little more spin. So one tip, if you're just going for distance control, you don't care about spin, just move the left stick down. The loft is how you're going to change your distance. But the right stick is how you're going to generate more spin. So that's how I would approach this shot. But do a practice swing, though, so that you know the right tempo. Because if you do the wrong tempo on this, it's going to mess up. It's not going to be the right percent. It's going to go way left if it's fast, way right if it's slow, and it's going to go way far if it's fast. So it, just do a practice swing. Make sure you have it dialed in before you hit the shot. Now, you can do that with any... Now, for another example here, if I hit the 6-iron, I'm trying to hit this marker here. So it's going to carry 161. And it rows about 10 yards. What if what if I don't what if I want to land it 161? But I don't want it to row that far. Say I want it to I want to land it about 160 something and have it get close to that second pin right here. So how what's a way I can do that? So you can actually hit a five iron. Go into shot shaping, hold down LB, move the left stick all the way down, and move the right stick all the way down. So you're going to get max spin, max dis net max loft. So this should land about 160, 159, somewhere around there. Now I did 101 power, so it's not going to land exactly there. 61. And watch how, look at the spin and how we almost hit the yellow marker. I like to do that shot a lot. But again, we have to keep in mind that if we're on master difficulty and swing timing's turned on, that shot's going to look a lot different. Look at the forgiveness when I move both of them all the way down. There's not a lot of window for error. So that's how I do percentage shots. I do that technique all the way down to pitching wedge, sand wedge, lob wedge. 
Now, when it's a little bit different, when I'm hitting a sand wedge here, and I do the same thing, in these cases, you're going to generate more spin. But you're not going to be exactly in between the clubs. So if I do full, like I just did, if I do that same shot shaping, it's not going to land between the two clubs. And if I do full shot shaping, let me rewind the shot. So let's say I hit the sand wedge and I go all the way down and all the way down. Instead of, let's see where this lands. Instead of around 82, we land, wow, that was very nice row. Um, so we generate a lot more spin, but we also did not land all the way back to the log wedge distance. We actually landed around 88, which is about in between, almost in between a sand wedge and a lob wedge. So in that case, in the case for the lob wedge, sand wedge, pitching wedge, gap wedge, you're not going to get the same you, you need to move it down a little bit farther if you want to be in between clubs but keep in mind you're going to generate more spin that way and the shot can be less forgiving but that's the technique that I use a lot of times for percentage shots with the wedges unless I'm in high winds or very high winds if I'm in high winds or very high winds I don't use a lot of shot shaping because the wind will affect the ball so much more if you loft it into the air Sometimes they even de-loft it to take out the wind. So then if we move in, the next thing we're going to move into is pitching. But for normal shots, you know how to use the shot shaping now to generate more spin, but also to use instead of doing percentage shots. So that's the method that I use to dial in distances between clubs. Now as we move into pitching, the most I usually pitch with is a 9-iron, but some, there are some cases if I'm trying to keep it out of the wind, I'll hit a 8-iron pitch. Now I will tell you, the shot shaping does not behave the same way as for a normal shot. You're not going to hit in between clubs even if you move the, both shot shaping features all the way down. And I'll show you next. So if I hit the 9 iron between 92, it's supposed to land between 92 and 79. Now if I hit it with full loft, land 87. So it's not exactly in between the two numbers but it still took off about five yards so can that be useful it can yes it can be useful sometimes but I don't think shot shaping is as useful for distance control on pitches I think it's so better to actually try to hit percentage shots on pitches and what I use the shot shaping feature for on pitches is to actually put spin on the ball so instead of, so if I'm hitting the sand wedge pitch at 60 yards here, instead of changing the loft like this to take off distance, I'm only going to change the spin here. And let's say I'm in between clubs. So I want to carry it about 55 yards. I'm going to do a practice swing, feel for the vibration. Of course, I don't, I don't play with the power bar usually. I actually don't like the power bar on because it messes me up a little bit. So if we hit 97%, we landed right at 55, and look at the spin control we had. So for pitches, that's when I don't change the loft very often. There are some cases that I do, if say in that example, with the 9 iron, I want to land at 87 yards, 86 yards. So in that case, instead of, and I want it to stick there. So in that case, I would do the shot shaping, move the left stick all the way down, right stick all the way down, and then try to land it about 86, 87, 
and get spin. Well, that hit the post, so it really spinned back. So that's when I would use that type of shot. So as we move into splash shots and chip shots, if you, you put full loft on the shot, you're really only going to take off about a yard. So in Sun 11, 16, it's going to land about 15. And then roll out about three yards. So loft becomes less important, but what you can, but what you need to use in this situation is the shot shaping. Uh, I mean the attack angle to add more spin. So if we want to land it at 16 between 15 and 16, let's say we want to land at 15 here. So what I would need to do is take off one yard by adding full loft, add max spin because when it hits, I want it to bounce forward about a yard and land right next to that marker. And that was perfect. We probably would have made that. So that's when I use for splash shots. I don't use it as much for distance control. I use it to get max spin. Now keep in mind it is going to change the forgiveness. So that's why sometimes I don't even touch the loft meter. So I don't touch the left stick. Uh, most of the times I actually just adjust the spin. So I change the attack angle on the right all the way down into the minus to get the max spin here. And then once I have the max spin, that's how I do the shot. So that's how I use splash shot shot shaping. Now as we move into chip shots, as we're looking at the different levels. I rarely ever pitch with, I mean chip, with anything over a pitching wedge. And I don't use loft shot shaping very often. The only time I use loft or change the attacking angle is actually if I want to hit a lob wedge and have it roll more than I want it to. So I, if I hit it normally here, it's gonna hit and not, and it's gonna go three yards further. But say I wanna carry it a little further without actually moving up to a sand wedge because I think the sand wedge is gonna roll out too far. So I'll you go to the lob wedge, you do shot shaping, I'll, I'll go up about two clicks, both sides, and then hit it that way. So I'm gonna roll out about 11 yards. So I, I picked up about one yard roll. So I do that in that in some cases. Not very often though, a lot of now on chips, mostly what I do, same thing with splash shots and pitching pitching shots, I actually do percentage shots. So if I wanted to hit here, in this case I would add a little bit of backspin on it, change the loft just a little bit, Feel for the vibration. I don't even look at the power bar when it's on. And then we hit the post. So now you know how I use shot shaping to generate more spin on the ball and how I use shot shaping to hit percentage shots even though there's a forgiveness penalty. If your tempo is getting more consistent, that's when it's better to use this technique. If you're having trouble with forgiveness, try to get a more forgiving club in the first place so whether it's a Bridgestone iron try to get the most forgiving irons in the game and just do real percentage shots instead of doing touching the shot shaping feature so just go with the old-fashioned percentage shot there I hope this helps you understand how I use shot shaping I hope this helps you understand how you can use it in summary LB is how you pull up shot shaping. You'll control loft and the attack angle. Um, the loft on the left affects the distance that the ball is going to travel. The right stick actually adjusts the spin on the ball. So I hope this helps. Let me know if, if you have any questions in the comment section below. The next tutorial series I'm going to do is actually a full hole tutorial to where I can show you the different elements. In that tutorial, there's gonna be, uh, first time I'm gonna do it on demonstration purposes with 
difficulty settings turned down and then the second I'm going to replay the the whole over with actual master TGC tour settings so that you can see how I use the system in real time. And there will also be more specific tutorials coming out on the TGC tour settings and how to improve your game without the power bar on master club difficulty and with all these settings turned off. So those are and then Make sure you check out the career mode series. That's one of my favorite series. It's I love to play through the career mode. So make sure you check that out because you'll see me using my system in an actual round. Thank you for watching this video. Thank you for your support. I could not do this without this community. Thank you for watching this video. Don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and keep coming back for more content like this and to improve your gamer ability.